Welcome everyone online and in person to our June Ordinary Council meetings. And I'll just begin by reading the live streaming. As the meeting chair, I give my consent for this open council meeting to be streamed live, recorded and published online in accordance with council's live streaming policy and governance rules. To members of the public join us in the gallery today, by attending this public meeting of the Council, you are consenting to your image, voice and comments being recorded and published. The Chair and or the CEO have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant, Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory or potentially inappropriate to be published. Attendees are advised that they may be subject to legal action if their, account, if their actions result in inappropriate and or unacceptable behaviour and or comments. Thank you. And the virtual meeting statements, part 12, COVID-19 temporary measures of the Local Government Act 2020 allows council meeting attendance by electronic means. The requirement of the meeting being open to the public is satisfied by the meeting being streamed live to council's internet. In the event of technical issues with the live stream, the meeting will be adjourned. Councillors are deemed as being in attendance if they can hear proceedings, they can see other members in attendance and can be seen by other members, they can be heard to speak. Um, today we have all councillors attending in person. Mobile telephone reminder, please turn off all mobile telephones or in the case of an emergency, please advise the chair and switch to silent mode. And I'll now read the statement of acknowledgement. West Coast Dye Council acknowledges the Buddharong as the traditional owners and custodians of the lands and waters and pays respect to their elders past, present and emerging, for they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and law. West Coast Shire Council celebrates the opportunity to embrace and empower the Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Island communities in their diversity. West Coast Shire Council will create opportunities for future recognition and respectful partnerships that will honour the traditional owners and custodians and Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander peoples. And I will now invite Councillor Holstead to read the Councillor's statement. Thank you, Madam Chair. All members of this Council pledge to the West Coast Shire community to consider every item listed on the agenda based on the individual merits of each item without bias or prejudice by maintaining an open mind and disregarding councillors' personal interests so as to avoid any conflict with our public duty. Any councillor having a conflict of interest in an item will make a proper prior disclosure to the meeting and will not participate in the debate or vote on the issue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. And now item A, present and apologies. We have an apology from Mayor, Councillor Michael Whelan, and everyone else is here present today. So thanks for being here. Item B, declarations of interest. Uh, we have two separate councillors with declarations of interest. Councillor David Rooks for item H7, Bass Coast Unlocking Rural Tourism Draft Strategy Community Consultation and item HJ strategic review of camping needs. And Councillor Dathari has a declaration of interest at item F2. And I'll now go on to the item C, confirmation of the minutes for the council meeting held on 18th of May. Can I have what someone move that the minutes of the council meeting held on 18th of May 2022 be confirmed? Councillor Bauer and seconded. Councillor Tassari, thank you. All those in favour and all those against. And that's been carried. I'll now move on to item D, public question time. I'm going to read out the questions and the CEO will provide a response and the responses will also be included in the council minutes. Question one is from Graeme Jolly. 
topic is third quarterly performance and financial report projects. Councillor Lang spoke of 25 action plan projects with two projects of concern when speaking to the motion third quarterly performance and financial report from the 31st of the 3rd, 2022. This was puzzling as the third quarterly report has a listing of 185 projects. Why is the councillor only concerned about 25 projects? Through the Mayor, Councillor Lane was referencing the actions listed in the Council Plan Annual Action Plan, not the list of Capital Works projects. Question two from Graham Jolly. Topic Councillor Expenses. Council reported councillor expenses at the 18th of the 5th, 2022 meeting. The report showed $20,540.45 of conference and training expenses. Would council please provide broader details for councillor Tassari and councillor Lang by naming the courses and the actual attendance locations? Through the Mayor. Councillor Tassari has participated in the Australian Institute of Company Directors course in Melbourne. Councillor Lang is undertaking an in-person and virtual coaching program for councillors, has completed the Municipal Association of Victoria Understanding Council Finances course, and has completed saltwater media training in Montaggy. She also attended the, attended the Virtual Rainbow Local Government Conference. Question three from Kevin Griffin, Bass Coast Ratepayers and Residents Association. Topic, third quarterly performance and financial report. Council's third quarterly performance and financial report provides a spreadsheet of 185 capital works projects. It shows 53 projects having no budget or carryover allocated funding. It shows 41 projects with no year-to-date actual expenditure. Why are all these projects listed that were not part of any budget process? Through the Mayor. Council is required to adapt to the needs of the community and there is a range of reasons why a project is added to the Capital Works Program. These include emergency works, grant opportunities and closing of final payments from works from previous financial years. Any works of a capital nature that are performed by Council during the year are included in our Capital Works Project list for transparency. Question four from Kevin Griffin, Bass Coast Ratepayers and Residents Association. Topic, contacts to council. If, for example, a community member sends one single email containing the email addresses of each of the nine councillors in the two line and say the CEO in the CC line, does the administration count that single email as being one contact, nine contacts or 10 contacts with council? Through the mayor. If an email is addressed to nine people, it will be received by nine people and will need to be actioned nine times. It is therefore considered nine contacts with council. We go to question five from Stacey Dagg, social housing, the topic. The state government announced 25 million of grant dollars of grant funding for social housing in the Basco Shire. Capital grants are for shovel ready capital works projects. What is the progress of construction for the urgent housing? Through the Mayor, Council is not responsible for the allocation of funding to construct social housing in Basco Shire Council, nor are we responsible for the actual construction work. The $25 million pool of funding sits with Homes Victoria, who are responsible for approving initial proposals. And question six from Melissa Dagg, topic Treasury Investment Report. Council reports a Treasury Investment Report. The report shows Bendigo Bank shares of either $40,000 or $40,000. If that is the case, a single share is $1 and not $10.29 or $10.68 as of the latest share price. Can you please explain the reporting difference? Through the Mayor, the value of shares held by Council are reviewed at the end of each financial year in line with the receipt of relevant share certificates and are subject to financial review by Vargo. This is why Council report on the number of shares in the quarterly report and not the value of them. And question seven from Kim Lightfoot. Engage topic is Engage Fast Coast. WWW.Engage Fast Coast is a new council website connection informing ratepayers of documents council is seeking public submissions. 
Would Councillor please insert a note onto all rate notices to inform ratepayers of Engage Bass Coast and its purpose? Through the Mayor, thanks for the suggestion. Council is currently preparing its supporting information to be sent with the rates notice, and we will certainly consider this. And question eight from Claire Diffie. Topic is capital works projects. Council reported two pool capital works projects, 100657 and 100658, each with funding allocations of $250,000 with year-to-date actual expenditures of $49,526 and $66,739. Why are both projects reported as 100% complete and status completed? Through the Mayor, funding is allocated for the delivery of concept designs and feasibility and funding strategies for both the Wonthaggy and Cowes Aquatic and Leisure Centres to align with the federal and state government elections. This work is now complete and we will continue to advocate to the state government for the upcoming election. Question nine, Malcolm Pinkerton. Uh, sorry, question nine is from Malcolm Pinkerton. The topic is Capital Works Project. Council has 185 Capital Works projects, of which 100 are not completed. When will the Mayor put a stop to this year after year practice of underperformance by the CEO of Council? Underperformance causing 60,000. 60912000 of investments, and I will be reading the response to this. Council does not accept the commentary regarding underperformance of the CEO. In each of the past two years, capital works delivery and expenditure have been the highest on record despite the challenging external supply chain and construction industry pressures. And question 10 from Len van der Neuwert. And the topic is CEO performance, and there's two parts to this question. Number one, as the CEO is employed by the ratepayers of the Basco Shire, why is it that the results of her review was not made public? And part two, why weren't members of our resident groups invited to participate in this review, as I find it rather insulting that the CEO only seems to be answerable to council officers and not the ratepayers who pay her wages? And I will also read the response to this question. The CEO is employed by council. The CEO's performance review is considered confidential information under section 66F of the Local Government Act. Council is required to have a, C a chief executive officer employment and remuneration policy that addresses performance monitoring. Council also has a CEO employment matters committee with an independent chair to facilitate all matters related to the CEO, CEO employment. And there are also three councillors appointed to this committee and council fully supports the CEO. And that brings a conclusion to public question time for today. We move on to item E, uh, petitions, joints, letters, deputations and correspondence of which there are none for this month and now we go on to um, notices of motion item f i'm going to invite councillor holstead to move and read the motion without speaking to it please thank you madam chair i'd like to move an amended motion if uh, officer Wally could put that up for us please and if you could just briefly describe your motion without speaking to it Want me to just read it out or it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, that council provide a report into our partnerships with community and industry to better understand how we allocate resources and what outcomes are achieved. And the report include um, one A, B and C and two A and B as listed. Okay, and I can have someone second the motion, please. Councillor Kent. And uh, Councillor Holstead, you may now speak to the motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, council often receives requests for partnerships that will be presented to Council on a case-by-case -case basis at Council meetings in a report form. As a first-time Councillor, I'm requesting this report to understand better what partnerships Council is currently involved in from an overall view. 
There are, I'm sure, a lot of partnerships that I'm not aware of because they haven't come to this chamber. Um, who they are with, what the arrangement is, if there's any financial or in-kind contribution made by council and how outcomes of those partnerships are reported to council. It is an opportunity that offers transparency and provides for good governance to ensure that these partnerships are being managed well and that the ratepayers of Bass Coast are receiving value for money and or positive outcomes for any investment. I am pleased to note the officer's comments that a review is being undertaken and I ask that the points raised in this notice of motion are considered as part of that report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. And Councillor Kent, would you like to speak to the motion? Nothing further. Thank you, um, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this motion? Uh, Councillor Holstead, uh, you may put it to a vote or if you'd like to uh, close, either or. I'm happy to put it to a vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Uh, we'll now vote. Uh, all those in favour? All those against? Motion is carried. And now we'll move on to item F2, management of Crown land. You, Madam Chair, I shall Yes, oh, yes. Sure. Thank you for reminding me, Councillor Tassari. I'm sure. Yep. Just like to note that Councillor Tassari oh, has declared uh, an interest, so he has now left the room. And we'll now move on to um, item F2, management of Crown land and community facilities. Councillor Holstead, you would, would you like to move and... Uh, thank you. Read the motion without speaking to it. Again, I'd like to move an amended motion if I can. Officer Orley will put that up. It's really just minor, the two um, amendments that I've made here to make it a little easier to report on. Uh, this motion is council to provide a report that investigates the roles of council and the Victorian government in relation to the management of Crown land and community facilities with items one through to four being included as part of that reporting as stated um, on the screen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. And can I have um, anyone who would like to second this motion? Councillor Kent and Councillor Holstead, you may now speak to the motion. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. I raise this report due to concern around the management of Crown land and the significant reliance on ratepayers to fund and maintain state government owned assets without provision of funds from the state government to do so. Ratepayers currently support through provision of administration, management assistance, maintenance, upgrades and refurbishments, as well as items like insurances. Most Crown land assets are the responsibility of DELP under the Victorian Government. However, it is ratepayers who fund the system of management set up by the state. Many of the Crown land sites are not even accessible by the community and limited negotiation is possible for progressing infrastructure requirements in our fastest growing suburbs. An example is the prime position of the San Remo Recreation Reserve where Western Port Tennis Club would love new courts. The San Remo Bowls Club are operating out of a 1956 built club room in need of upgrading and the recreation centre requiring refurbishment, upgrading, all held up while it took dealt months to engage a new committee. In the meantime, San Remo continues to be one of our fastest growing towns. One more quick example of this is the neglect of the Grantville foreshore that is suffering erosion, weed infestation and illegal use of land since DELP removed the foreshore committee and has refused to re-establish a new group dedicated to ensuring its protection. It's for this reason that I'm asking council to provide this report so that we can um, seek to find better outcomes for our um, community groups, our foreshores, our facilities and our assets. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Madam Chair. I see this notice of motion connected also to the prior notice of motion in that we have a partnership with the state government. 
And as per the first motion, we have to make sure that we get value out of this partnership. And I agree with uh, my fellow councillor here that we've got some fine examples of where Bath Coast doesn't seem to be getting value out of that partnership. Now, I'd like to personally be in hand, uh, have in hand that evidence and whether it then moves on to advocating to the uh, Victorian government. But we have this partnership, we are spending money on it, we need to make sure that our community is getting something out of it too. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this motion? Councillor Holstead, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Just a quick summarisation. Thank you, Madam Chair. The current system council is tasked by the Victorian government to manage with ratepayer funds is broken. And it is costing our communities not only financially, but physically and mentally. This report is about financial accountability and I ask for your support by voting in favour. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Halstead. I will now, we'll now put the motion to a vote. All those in favour? And I noticed that I didn't go around the room before when I, when everyone put their hands up, so I'll do it now. Councillor Lasseur, Councillor Halstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bower, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Lark, and me, um, Councillor Lang. And that motion is carried. And we'll now um, ask Brett to come to uh, Councillor Tassari to come back in the room. I'll go. Okay. So, uh, what? Brett. Mine's gone. Ronnie? Gone for coffee. Please hold while we heard the cats. I was just down Thank you very much. Welcome back, Councillor Tassari. Uh, we're going on to item G now, the Mayor and Councillor reports. I'll request uh, that councillors forego speaking on their monthly reports. However, they will be provided in the minutes of the council meeting. Uh, however, I do, with the exception, um, Councillor Tassari would like to, uh, I'd like to invite to make a statement. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I, I have got it written down here. I'm just quickly trying to find it. Basically, and I can't find it, I'd just like to declare that I, I have been, uh, let the councillors formally know and the community formally know that I have been endorsed by the, the Victorian Nats Party to run as a candidate for the upcoming state election. So I just wanted to um, put that out there. Good luck, mate. Congratulations, Council Sari. Uh, thank you. And we'll now move on to item H, reports requiring council decision with item H1, the adoption of the annual budget 2022-23. I'm going to invite Officer Wayne Mack to speak to this report. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is to adopt the 2022-2023 annual budget and fees and charges of schedule and Council's annual action plan 2022-23. Council adopted a draft budget in April, and this was placed on public exhibition, inviting submissions for a period of four weeks. Five written submissions were received, and two of these were kept heard by Council on 25 May 2023. In response to these submissions, and additional information available since the release of the draft budget, a number of changes are recommended, including funding towards Blue Gum Community Garden, Real Playground, CFA building cows refurbishment, cows recreation reserve master plan, for our future arts collaboration, Coronella Bowls of accessible toilet design project, and Crown Land strategic review. The recommended budget has been developed within the rate cap increase of 1.75%. It seeks to maintain our existing services and infrastructure, as well as deliver projects for our community. The total budget is expenditure is 126.8 million, which includes 29 million in capital works. 24 actions are proposed in the annual action plan, and these directly support progress towards the achievement of the council plan. I recommend these to council for adoption. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mack. And I will now ask if uh, any council would like to move it. Councillor Tassari. 
Did you? And yes. second. Sorry. Yes, that's the next step. Councillor Holstead. You second the motion? Yes. All right. Councillor Tassari, now may speak to the report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's very exciting, and, and, and Mr. Mack stole a lot of my thunder over there, so I'm probably going to repeat a little bit of it. But it's very exciting to be at this point um, to where we consider the adoption of the annual plan for 2022-2023. I'm really pleased that Council has been able to work hard in col collaboration with uh, officers and the community to develop the budget while uh, sticking to the uh, 1.75 uh, mandated rate cap. Council will uh, continue its strong investment in infrastructure, delivering $29 million allocated in capital works, um, which uh, goes right across the whole of the Shire, but not to mention a couple of the exciting Cows Cultural Centre and also the, uh, the Wontagi Activity Centre program. Um, it is uh, great that the Council has been able to include funding from the community submissions, and we, we sat here and listened to some fantastic submissions. And to be able to include that into uh, this budget, which hopefully we uh, will adopt today or we are considering today, is very, very exciting. Um, uh, without repeating uh, everything that's already been said, I'll just say that I support the annual budget, the fees, the charges, and the uh, annual actual plan. To the vote, I'll put it forward for consideration. Thank you, Councillor Tassari. Councillor Holstein. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, budget talks are always competitive with such a huge demand on the limited uh, funding that's available. I'm grateful that Council has supported the farm land differential rate once again and have delivered the budget, as Councillor Tassari said, within the State Government Directed Rate Cap. I would like to pay some special mention to the Shetland Heights Road Project, having received a grant through the Federal Government's Road to Recovery Program. The community surrounding this location has done a fantastic job at highlighting this much needed infrastructure after the state government refused to include the ceiling of this road when delivering the San Remo Bass Coast College project. Congratulations to the community for their commitment to this road ceiling project. It is also a great outcome to have the San Remo structure plan and the Bass Coast neighbourhood character study um, budgeted two incredibly important documents that will assist Council in seeking high-level outcomes for Bass Coast Shire. In closing, I thank members of the community who involved themselves in the budget process by making submissions, and for those submissions that may not have been successful, I encourage them to continue being a part of future process. As it's commonly said, it is often the squeaky wheel that gets the oil. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this motion? Councillor Lark. Thank you, Madam Chair. The adjusted underlying result, uh, in other words, the operating result, which excludes capital items, is arguably the most important financial indicator as it determines whether Council will be financially viable and able to maintain services on an ongoing basis. Put simply, if operating expenditure is greater than operating income, and this is the trend for our council, it means that internal funds are not sufficient to fund capital expenditure projects, and therefore borrowings have to increase accordingly. My proposition has always been to streamline operations to ensure a trend of consistent operating surpluses, thus giving rise to maximising internal funds available for capital expenditure projects and minimising the need to borrow to the extent possible. In other words, our borrowings blow out because we are not achieving consistent, consistent operating surpluses. I am not opposed to borrowing per se, particularly for intergenerational change projects, However, deem it not appropriate for a council that incurs significant and accumulated ongoing operating deficits. Accordingly, notwithstanding the positives of this budget, I will not support the budget due to council not streamlining operations to the extent required to ensure significant availability of internal funds for capital expenditure projects, and thus substantially increasing borrowings unnecessarily and become, becoming more heavily reliant on handouts from other levels of government. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Lark. Councillor Lusser. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to say, you know, congratulations to the officers and, and, and the team that worked on this. Um, I believe that we've got a budget that aligns with our long-term financial plan and uh, that seeks to address um, the existing service delivery that's expected from our community, the infrastructure and uh, the delivery of projects um, that the community seek. I also, you know, caution that there's been, there's many projects on it. All councillors have a wish list um, that we all want everything, which we can't always have. So there's, um, there's been cost blowouts, um, fuel price increases, and um, that has impacted on the delivery of some of the projects. I think we must have a budget that we can deliver on time and um, but appropriately resource. And I think this budget does that. I think that in future years, we'll have to be restrained with the number of projects. We've been very fortunate that we've had a lot of budget, uh, projects come our way through government funding, and, and they come at often a dollar to dollar basis where council does have to contribute. But it is seeking what the community are asking for. You know, they want those uh, intergenerational builders and they you know, want sustainability and everything with that that goes with it. So I think it's a fair budget, um, just that uh, we will have to keep our finger on the pulse about delivering a, a budget that is uh, sustainable to the financial uh, impact of rate capping and the other impacts. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sarkov. Uh, Councillor Bauer, and then... Uh, Sorry? He didn't put it. Oh, you know, no, you. you All that. right, Councillor Bauer. Councillor Bauer. I was looking at Councillor Rooks, I think. Uh, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, fellow councillors, and fellow ratepayers here to watch us gather. <clears throat> this budget is a real problem for our shire. As a standalone document for one year's training, it is achievable. However, putting this document into the context of the shire's 2022 23 action plan, and the Shire's overall financial position are red flags that must be addressed. In the officer's own report, they have identified an underlying loss of 3.4 million. The projected surplus is only 2.2 million. This tell me, tells me we are trending backwards. Look at how many things we are trying to achieve in the 2022 action plan. It is a frenetic document with so many things we are trying to achieve in just one year. When the 10-year plan was discussed last year, we do not know the full pact of COVID on our capital works program or other projects. The war between Russia and the Ukraine was the furthest thing from our minds. We also hope that the interest rates will not start rising for another to two years. Another one, two years. We have been reassured in briefings that our capital work, uh, briefings that our capital works have been that have started can be completed. However, we must look at those briefings not as a reassurance but as a warning. A warning that if we continue on our current trajectory, the underlying loss could very quickly become the actual loss, a situation no Shire or councillor wants to be in. We must reassess and reduce our ambitious program. We must look at the reliance, look at the reliance of external consultants. We employ highly qualified, competent staff who can produce the required outcomes. In the current climate, we must cut the cloth to fit the cloth. We need to trim down our ambitious and short term, go back to the basics and prudent economics. Fellow councillors, it'll take at least until 2025, as our own officer's projections indicate, to eliminate the underlying losses. That projection is based on all things considered staying the same. We need a stronger financial buffer. We must pull our heads in and put some of our very worthwhile projects on the back burner. We need to revisit our 2022 action plan and probably review the 10-year plan in light of the current circumstances and probably bring down a mini budget later this year. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Councillor Councillor Brooks. Yeah, I'm happy okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> End up before. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to first thank the um, council staff for giving us such an opportunity to get involved in the budget. Um, it's been over a period from February where we had touch points all the way through, so I really appreciate that. And I think it's a very sound budget. I'd like to focus on some of the um, annual 
uh, the, the annual action plan and some of the great activities that we're doing in addition to the $29 million that we're investing in capital projects. So it's, it's just an awesome outcome. And I'm excited about some of these. Finalising the urban forest strategy, which is a great project that's going to be done to look greening our environment in the suburbs. Uh, reviewing the waste management strategy, an opportunity to look at commercial waste, which we don't do well at the moment. Finalising the Vasco's tracks and trails strategy. So I'm looking forward to that. That's out of draft at the moment, and that's going to come, a, uh, come around very soon, finalising that, and then we can start implementing it. We have a budget for that too, so that's great. Uh, developing the streetscape master plans for Cows of Wonthaggy, which has also been mentioned today by other councillors. And finally, I'm very excited about the um, commencing the development of a master plan for the Cows Recreation Reserve. There's 80,000 that's been put aside for that site, which is the one diagonally opposite the RSL. And um, there's such an opportunity for that site for, um, for cows and for Phillip Island, not only for the sporting fields that hopefully will go there one day, but for many other activities that we can, um, that we can have there. So uh, I think it's a fantastic budget and I'm looking forward to adopting it. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm feel, feeling very fit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Good to hear. No, no, it's just a, an inside joke. <laughs> um, look, I, I've heard the comments from the other councillors and I've uh, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks and Councillor Lark, and I agree with all of them. Um, and I believe that our council officers and us as councillors must keep on looking at our budget. But I believe personally that we have pulled in the reins in regards to this budget. I believe personally that we have reduced our carryovers. Um, and I believe that council officers are looking at the potential of the environment that Australia finds itself in at the moment with increasing costs. Um, can I just ask you a question of clarification? I believe that we have put some money aside to, to maybe address increase potential increases. We've, we're looking at risk management, and I believe that's, I don't want to figure, but I just want to, uh, that it's a substantial amount. Um, so the question is, um, in regards to increasing costs, being put in place, increased costs and stuff. Yeah. That one, we're not. Okay. I'll put it to you. Uh, through the chair, provisions made in council's capital works program for materials and cost escalations for capital projects, and we believe we've got an appropriate. <laughs> Thank you for that. So it's my belief that council officers will keep uh, a close relationship with our. Um, people out there who are uh, carrying out our, uh, our projects and we've covered a risk management situation in regards to the financial side. The whole of Australia is hurting at the moment. We're, we're not immune to that, but I believe we've got the right people managing it. And I congratulate the council on still wanting to move forward instead of putting ourselves in a cocoon and waiting for the environment to improve. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ken. Would anyone else like to speak for or against the motion? Summarising. Councillor Kathari, would you like to close or put it to a vote? I'd like to just uh, say a couple of things if I can before we put it to a vote. Um, I, I've been sitting here, this is uh, I think now my, my sixth budget and I've heard uh, a lot of similar tones in all six of those, those budget discussions. Um, I've got total confidence in our financial team that uh, they uh, are monitoring the economy and the, and the situation that the world finds itself in and uh, have some fantastic people in our, in our uh, financial team that will uh, advise us in, in, in all the right things and I have total confidence in them. It's funny that I hear some of the comments that we must do this and we must do that and we must cut back from our projects and we must uh, settle down a bit, but it's us councillors that keep putting the projects forward. Um, demanding that our financial team try and fit these projects into their budget. Um, so it's just interesting commentary. We've been working on this budget now for a, a long time, a lot of months. We've all been taken along for the ride. We sat here and we listened to uh, community groups come in and, and they put some projects forward and we said to our financial team, you must fit those projects into our budget. Here we are now making statements in front of everyone so and addressing the, the people out there making these big broad statements when it's us that actually set the budget. 
So I put the budget to a vote. I'm, I'm very, very proud to do so. And I thank our financial team and our officers for working with us to represent the community the way we were voted in to do so. Thank you, Councillor Tassari. I'll now put that to a vote. All those in favour? Councillor Luther, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Tassari and Councillor Me. And, and all those against? Uh, Councillor Bauer and Councillor Lark. Division, please. All right, um, call the division. So, okay. yeah, all those in favour? <coughs> Councillor Lasser, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Brooks, Councillor Tassari, and myself. And all those against? Councillor Bauer and Councillor uh, Lark. And that motion is carried. We will now move on to item H2, Asset Plan 2022. You can Mr Sturton to introduce the report. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is to present to Council for adoption of the Asset Plan 2022. The Asset Plan seeks to plan the way the Council manages its $728 million of transport, buildings, open space and drainage asset base over the next 10 years. The plan identifies that our asset management requirements are in line with our long-term financial plan to maintain desired levels of service for the Shire's assets. The draft asset plan has been made available for public comment and received seven submissions. The themes of the submission included the role of the document, the types of infrastructure assets considered, relationship to climate change and questions about condition rating. All feedback has been considered in the body of the report. I'm pleased to present the asset plan 2022 to Council for adoption. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Uh, I'd like now I'd like to request a councillor move the report. Councillor Sir, and anyone second? Uh, it's a close one, Councillor Rooks. <laughs> councillor Sir. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm pleased to be able to uh, move this motion um, that we accept the asset uh, plan. The plan has been set out. And, and been put out for community consultation. And through that, um, the thoughts of the community have been considered and uh, considered into the final document. Uh, it has been on the new engage basscoast.vic.gov.au, and I'll, I'll sprout that one every time because it's a great platform for people to be engaged. Uh, just jump online, put that in, and you'll see the whole plan. Uh, what's the plan do? Well, the, the plan itself reflects our infrastructure and asset needs the council are responsible for. The plan is required under the Local Government Act. It's an informative plan and it's across all our asset classes, reflecting the value of our road network, our transports, our um, buildings and our facilities. It informs the community of the costs of the service and the life cycle of these and capital costs of these assets. It will help lay out the long-term decisions required to balance community needs and the available funds um, that uh, are required to uh, keep these assets in, in service. I think it's a worthy read and I think um, I'd encourage all community members to have a look at it. So thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lasser and Councillor Brooks. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I'm very excited about this uh, draft asset, so this asset plan. Um, with $728 million worth of assets we have across our council, um, it's, it's a very important plan indeed. And we do quite well at the moment um, relative to the national average with what we, we provide with regards to our assets. Um, the national average of, um, of um, backlog of poor condition assets is 8% and ours is only 1%. So we do exceptionally well in that area. And to keep that good performance up, we have to spend an adequate or reasonable amount of money. And that's gonna cost around $11.6 million every year, uh, which is an appropriate spend to continue the strong results that we're getting. So I'm very supportive of this plan. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this motion? Councillor Luck. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, robust asset management and valuation processes are essential for councils to meet their community's needs. And I'm pleased that council has improved its assets, asset processes markedly in recent times and found a balance between service levels and costs supported by IT improvements and controls. 
That's their key performance indicators show that asset renewal and upgrade expenses are somewhat under an optimal level in the 2022-2023 budget, indicating budget priorities are not quite right. I would have favoured a greater asset plan expenditure budget on property infrastructure from local roads and drainage to community centres in lieu of other less important budget expenditure. However, that doesn't will not preclude me from supporting the asset plan, notwithstanding more priority funding in this area is needed and undervalued. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this motion? I'll seek a point of clarification if I can, Madam Chair. I was just gonna, from Councillor LaServe, that website, what was that again, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> Engage Mass Coast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. That's right. Uh, any other any other one else want to speak for or against? I just question? ask a question of the officers in relation to our assets. Are we reliant upon um, grants for roads and um, infrastructure upgrades and that sort of thing? I think we're not reliant on them, but we see any opportunity that we can to supplement our capital works program for external grants. If I may, then, um, Madam Chair, I've got a few things to say. Um, I think the asset plan gives our community a snapshot of the current and future challenges we face in the provision of well maintained community assets, let alone much needed additional requirements. Rate caps on the surface are great and new legislative requirements may be seen as keeping overzealous councils in line. But in fact, it is all designed to create a greater reliance on the state government where councils have no choice but to go cap in hand. Councils need to toe the line with the real fear of being told no funding for you. This is the harsh reality. In the meantime, our beaches are eroding, our facilities are deteriorating, and our community needs are greater than ever. I congratulate the officers on their ability to adapt and provide ways of attaining the goals and expectations of our community under incredibly difficult budget pressures. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. And would anyone else like to speak for or against the motion? Councillor Serves, would you like to close? Would it to a vote? Put it to a vote, please. Uh, all those in favour? Councillor Serve, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Mark, Councillor Tassari, and Councillor Lang. That motion is carried. Move on to item H3 request for authorisation to commence the planning scheme amendment for the land at Bass Road to be introduced, Bass Road Bass, to be introduced by Mr. Certain. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is for council to consider a rezoning request to change the land from farming zone to low density residential zone for the subject land identified as Bass Road Bass and a planning permit application to subdivide the same land into 52 lots. The subject land is within the settlement boundary of Bass and it is recommended that this rezoning proposal has strategic merit to progress the planning scheme amendment component of the application. However, there is still some outstanding issues regarding drainage infrastructure that have not been satisfied. For this reason, it is recommended to progress the planning scheme amendment, but not the subdivision application at this stage until the drainage work has been completed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Um, now, invite a councillor to move the motion. Councillor Lesserve and second, Councillor Holstead. Councillor Lesserve. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, look, I'm, I'm pleased to please kick this and get this, this part of the uh, recommendation, the application. Moving ahead, um, the request is, uh, is to start is only the start of the subdivision to move the property from a farm zone to a low density residential zone. This application has been many years in the making and is within the town boundaries of the township of Bass. There is a strategic justification to proceed with this rezoning. Um, this is an acceptable, it is acceptable under the um, the state and the local planning scheme. Our council has uh, taken all of those things into consideration and the land supply availability, and this will help facilitate that when it comes into that low density residential zone. Uh, there's still more work to do for the applicant. Um, 
and the main purpose is to proceed uh, with this application and have the officers work closely with the applicant to meet all the um, the legal requirements that are in place to to have uh, the rest of the subdivision planning permits done and the rezoning of the land. So I'm happy to put the motion. Thank you, Councillor Sir. Councillor Holstead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Bast is a really cute little town in the Shire. Um, it's at this stage only a small town. I think this is a great addition given that it's in the township boundaries. Council has been limited through the distinctive area landscapes now. We do have a population growth to accommodate. Uh, I agree with Councillor Lesserve. This is uh, the first step and uh, there's a long sort of process to go through, but I think that given, um, you know, we do have these township boundaries in force now, uh, we need to start accommodating for what is expected to be a, a bit of a population growth and it, we're already seeing it. So um, I support the recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Halstead. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this motion? Councillor Sir, um, did you want to close or put it to a vote? Please put it to the vote, thanks, Madam Mayor. All those in favour? Councillor Sir, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Lark, Councillor Tatsari and Councillor Lang. That motion is carried. Now we move on to item H4, uh, planning application 050926-1-177-181 and 183 Graham Street, Montaggy, McDonald's. Mr Sturton to introduce the report. I'll say that, Chair. Thanks. Uh, the purpose of this report is to present planning application 050926-1, which seeks to amend the existing McDonald's restaurant located at 177 to 181 Graham Street, Long Baggy, and to incorporate 183 Graham Street, Long Baggy. Uh, the amendments to the existing use include alterations to the building, realignment of the drive through changes to parking arrangements, and associated signage with the current use. The application is advertised and received 13 objections. The application has been assessed against the Basco planning scheme and it is recommended that Council issue a notice of decision to grant a planning permit subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Would anyone like to move this motion? Councillor Tassari and a second. Councillor Kent in by a nose. Councillor Tassari, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Chair. Not a lot to say apart from anyone that's uh, happened to be driving past McDonald's or going to McDonald's uh, in a busy period and you've got the cars on the drive through that are actually out on to, uh, to uh, Graham Street and back to the roundabout, will uh, welcome this, uh, this alteration to the plan. Um, not that I'm a big Mac McDonald's uh, user, but certainly if you have been there, it's it's really quite set up on a tight, tight property and the extension will, I think, uh, make its use better for everybody in, that's going there and also going past the uh, the property. So I uh, will support this recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Tassari and Councillor Ken. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think this is a big decision for one thing. It comes with a lot. Oh, uh, boom, boom. And my main comment yet though is we have had some significant problems in the past with parking for the one saggy uh outdoor bowling club i believe that this will have a significant change to those problems with car parking availability in the area thank you councillor ken would anyone else like to speak for or against this motion councillor lark just briefly, uh, I have reservations about an expanded footprint for a fast food outlet in our region uh, because of health implications. However, I will support the application solely on the basis that it may provide further employment opportunities for our young people in Wontaggy and Browns. So notwithstanding the reservation, I support the application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Does anyone else like to speak for or against the motion? Okay, Councillor Tassari, did you want to say anything else or put it to a vote? No, let's put it to a vote, Madam okay, Chair. Thank you. Uh, all those in favour? Councillor Sir, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Lark, Councillor Tassari and Councillor Lang. That motion is carried. Move on to item number 85, planning application 
210247, the Esplanade in block with Mr. Sturton to introduce the report. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is to present a planning application 210247, which seeks to develop the land for a four story mixed use development located at the two to four the Esplanade in block. The development proposes 42 apartments and three commercial tenancies. The land is owned mixed use zone. Which the proposed use of commercial tenancy, tenancies and a residential hotel is consistent with. The application was advertised and received 30 objections and one supporting letter. Over the recent one weekend, Council received a further 34 objections to this application, now totaling 64 objections and one letter of support. The application has been assessed against the Bass Coast Planning Scheme, and it is recommended the Council issue a notice of decision to grant a planning permit subject to the conditions as outlined in the report which includes the deletion of the proposed fourth level. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Can I have Councillor move and second the motion? Councillor Tassari. And someone second? Councillor Kent. And Councillor Tassari, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Chair. This is uh, this is one of those ones that uh, was always going to divide the uh, the community and it has, I've had uh, a lot of positive feedback regarding this, this project. Um, and I've read a lot of the, uh, the uh, feedback against it as well. Um, with anything like this, uh, it's always going to be one that where you, you put a lot of time and a lot of thought into. Um, the project is one that ticks off most of the boxes and uh, I have a fear if, if it was rejected, it would go to VCAT anyway um, and be thrown straight back at us. Uh, it's a project. Does it uh, tick off everything that I would like to see there? Probably not. Does it tick off most of the things I would like to see there? Yeah, I'm pretty comfortable with it. So I'm happy to uh, support this project, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Tassari. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I concur with uh, my fellow councillor's comments there. I'm hoping that the developer will agree with us too. Uh, I think it's a fair outcome for both the developer and for the community. Um, Nothing more to say. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this motion? Councillor Lark. Uh, I, I have some reservations in relation to this development, uh, particularly in respect to parking. And key for me, the overshadowing, though it's been downplayed in the report, the overshadowing of the adjacent parkland. I, I won't be supporting the application. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Would anyone else like to speak, Councillor Lassar? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I think it's a, a fair proposal. I think it's a, you know, it's a stylish uh, design. It's, I suppose the beauty's in the eye of the beholder. But I think that we look at a visitor econ economy strategy and look for, you know, more accommodation, more facilities, and that. And you know, really, I think it's an upgrade to. The facility that was there was very ageing, not to say it wasn't useful, but I think this is really will help support employment and that in the area as well. So I'm happy with that. Thank you, Councillor Lasso. Would anyone else like to speak for or against the motion? Councillor Tassari, did you want to close or put a no, vote? To a vote. All those in favour? Councillor Sir, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks, and Councillor Tassari. And those against, Councillor Lark and Councillor Lang. And a, and a division, thank you. Yep, all those in favour? Councillor Lasseur, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Lark, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks. No, sorry. sorry, what did I say? Uh, Kent. Councillor Kent, my bad. Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks, and Councillor Tassari, and those against, Councillor Lark and Councillor Lang. And um, apologies, my brain seems to be short circuiting with names. Uh, that motion is carried. Move on to item H6, planning application 210347. 7 Chapel Street Towers Development of Plan for Mixed Use Development, Retail Shop and Eight Dwellings in C1Z and DDO there's, there's 11. Another, another to that. Councillor Bauer, you would like to move an alternative motion? Uh, Miss, I'll just get Mr Sturton to introduce the report and then you can okay. make the motion. 
The purpose of this report is to present funding applications to on the road three years from six to development plan for a three story mixed use development, comprising of a retail shop and eight dwellings at 77 Chapel Street Cows. The land is located within the commercial one zone and is also located within the design and development overlay 11, which will lead to the Cows Activity Centre, which the site is located within. The application was advertised and received 10 objections. The application has been set against the Bascoast planning scheme and it is recommended that Council issue a notice of decision to grant a plan agreement subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. And uh, Councillor Bow, may I ask you to introduce your motion without speaking to it? Does that make sorry? You know what I mean, don't you? Can you put it up? Well, Bow, it's going to go up on the screen. Then you just briefly describe it. Well, um, basically, it is to uh, reject the to, to reject this uh, development at this stage. Um, and um, I'll ask if someone would like to second that motion. And that uh, motion, that motion now lapses, and we now revert back to the original recommendation in the agenda and I will now ask a councillor to move that. Councillor Rooks and second. Councillor LeServe. Councillor Rooks, would you like to speak to the recommendation? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, look, I'm very excited about this uh, project. Um, it's the right building in the right place with both shop, uh, one shop and accommodation in the commercial zone. Uh, much work had been done previously in the 2015 Cows Activity Plan and then amending that in 2019 to set up how we want the, uh, the look and feel of the, the township of Cows. And three storeys was uh, the accepted area along the main street and out to the sides in certain areas, including this area of this, where this land is. And um, the preferred height is up to 11 metres and this building comes in 10.4 metres, so it's completely appropriate. It gives developers confidence. It's very expensive to build in Phillip Island, to buy the land and build. And without that confidence, those guidelines that we've been able to give them, um, they, they can't give it a crack. And so it's, um, it'd be really disappointing if we knock this back after setting up the plan, um, giving the developers, developers the um, indication that we're going to um, approve it and then knock it back. Um, there's adequate car parking. It's set back, so it's quite an attractive design. Um, so I'm very supportive of this. Um, of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Lesser. Thank you. Uh, as I said in the previous application item, uh, that you know it's a stylish building. This one, I think that it's um, it fits the objectives of the visitor economy strategy when we're talking about more accommodation in the heart of cows. I mean that's where you want to be. I think it's uh, it's appropriate. Um, it kind of meets all, all, fits all those boxes. So I'm, I'm happy with the report and I think that we'll get a good satisfactory outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Sir, would anyone else like to speak for or against the motion? Councillor Rooks. Bauer. Uh, Bauer, yes. I'm just sure the one. Councillor. One next to Councillor Rooks is Councillor Bauer, was what I was going to say. Um, thank you, Deputy uh, Mayor. Uh, so I have an answer to the motion to agree with this. Uh, this building is a bit of overkill in the actual location. As a standalone building, no problems with it at all. It fits all the criteria, tick, tick, tick. However, if we want to keep the feel of the area, the problem is that you've got the, the car parks, which are zero level. You've got the lovely string of shops in the courtyard, one level. And then you've got the residents on the other side of this, which is the levels as well. Uh, it, it will even overpower the two-storey building located at 81 Chapel Street. This property is on the edge of the shopping district, which uh, in some ways makes it a monolith standing there. The residents of 75 and 73 Chapel Street, not to mention the residents on Ganesta Street, will be directly impacted by the height of this development. This is borne out by the fact that there are 10 objectives to this proposal. Though this development uh, complies with the CAS activity plan, by virtue of its size and location and abutting the, re the residential zone, 
we need to look at this development in perspective to the buildings and residences around it. And I am not in favour of it in its current form. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bauer. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this motion? Councillor Rooks, did you want to close or put it to a vote? Put to a vote, thanks. All those in favour? Councillor Sir, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Love, Councillor Tassari, and Councillor Lang, all those against? Councillor Bauer, that mm -hmm. motion. Oh. And uh, will all those in favour? Councillor Lesser, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Lark, Councillor Tassari, and Councillor Lang, and all those against? Councillor Bauer. That motion is still carried. And now we'll move on to item H7. And Councillor Rooks has declared an interest on this one, so he'll be exiting the room. See you, Councillor Rooks. See you soon. Thank you very much. It was noted. And uh, with Mr. Sturton to introduce the report. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is to present to Council the draft Bass Coast Unlocking Rural Tourism Strategy and to release the strategy to the community for consultation. The purpose of the draft strategy is to facilitate sustainable tourism development in appropriate located rural areas by removing barriers that are preventing economic growth. The draft Unlocking Rural Tourism Strategy is being produced in concert with the Bass Coast Industrial Land Use Strategy, Economic Development Strategy, and the housing strategy and neighbourhood character strategies, all of which are in various stages of development. The draft unlocking rural tourism strategy is also reflective of the recommendations made in the state government and the distinctive areas and landscapes project. It is recommended that council endorse the draft unlocking rural tourism strategy for community consultation after which an amended strategy will be presented at a later council meeting for adoption. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. And I will have Councillor Holstead moving the motion and another councillor to second. Well, it was a close one. Councillor Kent. Um, councillor Holstead, you may speak to the motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I couldn't be more excited about a strategy than I am about this one. I think we've been slow off the mark to encapsulate our regional area. We, we put a lot of focus at, on Phillip Island and uh, a lot of the hinterland is in Western Port Ward. So I am in Western Port Ward driving around regularly and I just think that there's a real untapped market there for um, you know, farming communities to be able to tap into the tourism uh, side of things for a little bit of extra cash. Um, it also provides a wonderful getaway for young families uh, get a piece of the farming life. Uh, I've got a dairy farmer in my family and I always enjoy going and, you know, help milk the cows and have a bit of fresh air in my lungs. So I'm really excited for what this strategy will bring. Um, I hope that it will also, um, oh, I think we're going to talk about that later anyway with the uh, dump points and camping needs and that sort of thing. But um, no, it's a very exciting strategy that I'm really looking forward to um, seeing what comes out of it. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, excuse me. I just want to remind the community that this, this is a draft strategy at this stage. Mm. We're only here voting for it to be released to the public to get your comments. And the main purpose of this strategy, strategy is to facilitate sustainable tourism development. To me, my own personal feeling, sustainable means quality too. So I'm looking forward to the feedback from the community for us then to look at the locked in strategy. It's great to see that we also received a grant uh, to go towards the costing of this strategy. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this motion? Councillor Bauer. Just a quick comment here. This is a very extensive report, uh, and but I think in many ways it's a little bit narrow in its scope, in, in its recommendations and scope. I think there's so much more we can do than just uh, having people stay on farm and watch a chicken drop my dag overnight. 
I think we really should expand this out. And I, I am going to support it because it's a draft and the community can put their input in. And if I may get a clarification through you, Madam Chair, to the officers, the recommendations from the community, will they be incorporated into this draft? Considered. Um, so the, the draft strategy will go to community consultation. We'll receive back the label that feedback and key themes if they emerge uh, from that feedback will be incorporated into the draft strategy to, and ordered back to council for adoption. Perfect. Happy, very happy. I, I will vote in favour of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Councillor Bauer. Um, would anyone else like to speak for or against Councillor Sir? Um, Thank you, uh, and I'm really pleased that also that this is going out to the community and it'll probably go to Engage Bass Coast. Um, <laughs> so that I'll encourage Don't everybody to get on Thank you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we'll have that one off, Pat. But it is important because the rural community need to, you know, they need to be able to ex um, expand their operations or think you know outside what they're actually doing to create more interest and activities within that rural zone but there's been a lot of misinformation sent around about this one so i really would encourage community members and through the rural engagement group to have a look at it consider it and as a group advisory group of council um, to look at this as a really a working document and come back to us with their comments on it so if they can't, if we can't put it out and get people to respond, um, that will be very disappointing. So please have a look at it and have, uh, you know, get your answer, you know, your comments into offices and to councillors. Thank you, councillor. So would anyone else like to speak for or against this motion? Councillor Holstead, um, would you like to close? Briefly, um, Madam Chair, I got very excited about the whole strategy and what what's able to be achieved and. Um, I, I confer with my colleagues that, you know, interacting with the community and getting their feedback is crucial. But I think Bass Coast Council does that just about every strategy document that goes through here is always community consultation. So um, I sort of neglected to, you know, note my appreciation of that. Um, and I will look forward to seeing what, what comes back from the community. And I hope they're as excited about it as I am, because I think it's a great thing. And I think we need to share the wonderful area of, sh of our Shire and uh, let people come along and see just how lucky we all are and they aren't. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Holstead. And uh, on that note, we'll now put it to a vote. All those in favour? Councillor Sir, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Lark, Councillor Tassari, and Councillor Lang. That motion is carried. We will now move on to item number H8. Hold up. Councillor Rooks has also declared an interest to this one. Sorry, Madam Chair, I got ahead of myself. All good. We've got the strategic review of camping needs, and we've got Mr. Mack introducing the report. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is to present the findings of a strategic review of camping needs in the municipality arising from council resolution of December 2021. The detailed review has been undertaken and considered a wide range of matters, including supply and demand, economic benefits, management options, regulation, and compliance. The community engagement survey was undertaken on Engage Bass Coast for one month, incorporating the Easter holiday, primarily for respondents completing the survey. These respondents identified a range of needs and opportunities as well as Overall, the review identified that there is an opportunity for free and low-cost caravanning and camping within the Bass Coast. However, the economic return on investment is unclear in the broader context of council strategies. The recommendation is made that council support the review and refer it for consideration in the development of economic development strategy to ensure that any future investment by council will generate the appropriate economic Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Mack. I'll now ask the councillor to move that motion. Councillor Holstead in a second. Councillor Kent. Councillor Holstead would like to speak to you. Thank me. you, Madam Chair. Look, I, I won't um, beat around the bush on this one. I'm disappointed that we're not moving forward more promptly with the introduction of a camping strategy. Um, however, I support the referral for consideration to the economic development strategy to make sure that we're doing 
that work and that there is going to be benefit to the wider community by such a strategy. Um, I'm a little concerned in relation to the Dalston Football Club's proposal for a dump point, which um, was passed on to council that they were prepared to fund it. Um, and it's, we've been advised that it's not a suitable site. However, the president of the football club has been in touch with me this afternoon through email, uh, suggesting that he hasn't spoken to anyone from council. So I'm a bit disappointed that, you know, it was asked that this be considered as a location, yet we've not been in touch with the president of the club um, or of the Recreation Reserve Committee, which is probably more appropriate to say should have been the, the contact. Um, and I hope that moving forward that, that uh, Dalston will be considered, that officers will be in touch with the Recreation Reserve Committee um, and just have a look at the plan that they were putting forward. Um, I don't think we can say no unless we've actually seen what they're proposing. So I hope that that would be considered. But yes, I do understand that uh, economic development strategy is important just to ensure that we are gonna get an economic benefit and it's better for our community if that happens. So in saying that, Madam Chair, uh, I will be supporting the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, First of all, I will be supporting this recommendation. Get that off my chest. But I'm also unhappy uh, initially uh, with these findings. I personally believe that unless you are a caravaner or somebody who gets out into the bush and experiences that freedom in our nature parks, that you honestly do not understand what, what the whole system is. Free camping is not free camping, unless they can find somebody's backyard. There is always a price to it. There's no free lunches. There's always an expectation that you will pay a small fee. And normally throughout Australia, these fees will go to support community groups, whether it's a farm, a football ground, a show ground, there's some sort of fee being paid there. Free camping is not in competition with our local commercial caravan. It is, it complements them. The customer that wants to use the free camping is not coming to Bass Coast. They are by, bypassing Bass Coast at the moment. They're heading down to Wilson Prom, or they're just not coming here and spending their money at all. I have been assured by council officers that we can widen the scope of the review in the future. And I also believe that we have to take a long with us, the community groups who have stepped forward to actually look at having what we call free camping in, the, in their own backyards. And this may or may not include football grounds, pony clubs, motocross track areas. I'm open to suggestions from these groups to, in a, an effort for them to provide a service, but also supplement their income too. But again, I'll recommend this at this point. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak to this motion? Councillor Lark. Um, I, I fully accept what Councillor Kent has said, that there's two separate markets uh, in, in free camping versus the commercial side of things, but I just want confirmation that when this matter is referred to the economic development team, that the impact or potential impact on uh, businesses running caravan parks will be considered as an integral part of that study. Yep. Is that a point of clarification? Your point of clarification. Mr. Mack or Mr. Box? Um, through you, Madam Chair, um, yes. Thank you. Would you like to continue? No. Well, thank you, Councillor Lark. And would anyone else like to speak to the motion? Councillor Fari. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I uh, will just start off by saying that I certainly am not a caravaner. I'm one of the ones that uh, Councillor Kent was talking about. In fact, I can't help but think that he was looking at me while he said that, but I, did. <laughs> I didn't look at him. Um, so I'm not a caravaner. Um, I, I struggle to get my head around free, not being free, um, and a, a token 
and what I consider is not even a token donation, you know, some of the numbers that have been thrown around, you know, $20 or, or 20 odd dollars. Um, I, I really do struggle to get my head around that because I, I five minutes down the road, you've got the mouth of the pallet that have to pay all the, the due registrations and you've got all the, every, the costs that go with them. And I think that's uh, a little bit of what Councillor Lark was uh, indicating. Um, they have to abide by all the laws, but then we're allowing free parking two minutes just down from them. So I certainly will be um, supporting this uh, recommendation and I look forward to what comes forward and I will be guided by caravanners. But uh, yeah, I, I think we've got to remember to make sure that we've also got fair trade as well. Thank you, Councillor Tassara. Would anyone else like to speak to the motion? Councillor Halston, would you like to speak? Uh, I think councillors have covered it and I think a further discussion as it goes through the process will be warranted. I'm a caravaner myself. Um, I completely concur with Councillor Kent uh, when it comes to free camping versus commercial in industry. Um, of course, we wouldn't want to see any impact to our commercial uh, caravan parks but they are appealing. Free camping does appeal to a different um, group of caravanners um, for different reasons, but all that will be covered as we go through the process. So we won't need to go through it now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. I'll now put it to a vote. All those in favour? Councillor Lesseur, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Ken, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Lang, and Councillor Tassari and Councillor did I say Councillor Lark? I said Lang. Councillor Lark. <laughs> I'm Councillor Lang. Thank you for clarifying. That motion is carried. And now the Councillor Rooks to return to the room. Councillor Tassari, you Thank can... you very much, Councillor Lark. Yes, yes. And uh, we'll now move on to item H9, Road Management Plan Review. Mr Sturt introducing the report. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is to present the Road Management Plan Review. Road Management Plan establishes Council's levels of service to proactively inspect public roads and pathways and specifies response time for repair for, for impairing identified hazards. The consultation period is conducted from February to March 2022, during which three submissions were received. One minor administrative change has been made to the road management plan, which is presented for adoption. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Can I have a councillor move the motion? Road management plan review. Councillor Rooks and a second. Councillor Sturt. Councillor Rooks, you now may now speak to the motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is an important review. Um, roads are very important to people in the community, and uh, how often we inspect and get out to do response. Um, of the road conditions. Um, the review is required as per the Act and generally we do very well in the area of, um, of this area because the review didn't pick up a lot that had to change. Um, overall we do very well compared to other uh, areas. Um, we've got an overall satisfaction of 6% higher than other large shires across Victoria so that's a good result as well. One of the things I was pleased about is um, for the people that like using our tracks and trails um, they, I guess, have improved the scope of the work um, with regards to that and um, they'll be inspecting the tracks and trails with um, a high degree of service, I would argue. Um, and um, there's one area where I know on Phillip Island Tourist Road, which is very ordinary, um, and I know that's going to get done up in, in the next year's budget. So um, I commend this, um, this review. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, sits alongside that asset management plan. Uh, so, look, it, it's, the, it's the guiding document. So, I think that um, they've certainly covered it all. If there's one thing we do hear about is if things aren't right and on the roads and potholes, well, I think that as far as I'm concerned as a councillor, we've got a lot of roads to manage and, and that certainly has, um, I haven't been in inundated with the as many calls as, as before, whether or not people are putting them straight into council. Um, but look, it, it, it's just important that we keep on top of it. And um, yeah, I'm happy to support the recommendation. Thank you, councillors. Uh, would any other councillor like to speak for or against this recommendation? Councillor Kent. 
Uh, look, I, I only want to add that I think the council, well, I know the council is doing a great job and we're leading by example. I hope coming up to an election period that possibly our local candidates can look at what we're leading with because the roads lead into Bass Coast are atrocious. Mm. And uh, I think the state government needs to, to look at that situation. It's great having a tourist industry, a destination, but I know one of our councillors disappeared into a pothole the other day and it cost her a, a tyre. Um, we just need to have a, a complete road structure. It's just not the Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Now I'm going to have to say something, Madam Chair. Yeah, Thank you. Um, just before I address that, what Councillor Kent was talking about, I, I just wanted to make a quick mention of the rollout of the new one council system, which I think sounds like has made an incredible difference to the department, which is great because that's council investing in our IT. And we know we've invested a lot in IT, especially given COVID. So um, it's terrific to hear that that system's doing a good job. But on the other hand, um, I agree, Councillor Kent, I am the elusive councillor who almost lost her car in a massive pothole um, on a cold, rainy, dark night. You could not see it and it was huge. And it took out my front driver wheel, um, found myself on the side of the road trying to change a tyre um, and not very happy about how it got there because I understand that Vic Roads um, won't, is it Vic Roads or is it Regional Roads? Yeah, Regional Roads. Regional Roads won't um, reimburse you unless you've already forked out $700 or something and uh, the, the tyre's not going to cost me $700. So it's my pocket, it's hit and I'm sure there's plenty of others out there. So I agree, Councillor Kent, the road's coming into Bass Coast and that one particular I use regularly. As you all know, my business is in Turidan, so I travel back and forth along that highway and it, it really is atrocious. So if we can advocate to get something done there, that'd be great. Thank you, Councillor. Well, try to keep it short. I'm try and keep the debate to the, to the relevant to the recommendation. Okay. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this recommendation? Councillor Lark? Uh, I'm, I'm for this uh, uh, recommendation, clearly. I just want to reiterate that this needs to be read in conjunction with the asset plan. Yeah. And I'm firmly of the belief that in our budget, we don't allocate sufficient monies for renewal and upgrades, including local roads. So I think there's room for improvement in that regard on a priority basis. Thank you, Councillor Lark. Councillor Rooks, um, you, would anyone else like to speak? Good, Councillor Rooks, did you want to um, put it to a vote? Put it to a vote. All those in favour? Councillor Lesserve, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Lark, Councillor Tassari and Councillor Lang. That motion and <laughs> is in item H9 has been carried. We now move on to item H10. This is certain to introduce a report. Thank you, Madam Chair. The benefit of the proposal is to seek a variation to contract number 18023 for the design and construction of the purpose built facility at Phillip Island Centre for Adelaide Learning Pickle at the Worley Avenue site in Cowes. The variation request is driven by recent material cost escalations, further construction costs not related to increased scope, and additional costs attributed to building permit conditions. The report requests an increase of $166,106.69, excluding GST, which brings the total design and construction contract to $1,951,367.69. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Councillor, to move the motion. Councillor Rooks and the seconder. Councillor Bauer. Councillor Rooks, you may now speak to the motion. Thank you, Madam Recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, this is a frustrating outcome. Uh, as council, we've been exceptionally supportive of the community asset which Pickle uses um, in their move from their current site to their new site. Um, we had to change the design plan slightly once we established the, the site they're in now, um, and that uh, raised the cost. And also we've had some material and labour costs 
that have come through higher than expected. Um, and that's understood through the economic cli climate that we have at the moment. Uh, our hand is forced here in a way because uh, they are moving, uh, Pickle is moving, this community asset has to move as the hospitals go in onto their current site. Um, so I'm okay to approve this variation. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Bauer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, there's not much more I want to say that uh, Councillor Rooks has already said, but just to note, that yet again the inconsistencies in spending a bomb of money to save a tree of this site, yet chopping down three majestic gum trees in Anderson Street, which is a greenfield site. Just want to make that point. Uh, but I fully support this and I hope we get people located soon. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bow. Would anyone else, Councillor Holstead? Uh, I have got something to say, but if I could ask a question first, Madam Chair. Um, just in relation to page 162, where we talk about some of the increases as follows. Um, cost increase for material and labour, I can understand, given the situation we find ourselves in. The rest of the points, I'd like to know why those weren't addressed in the original costings that were put to Council when um, this project first came along. I would have thought those things would have been covered if someone could address sure. that, please. Councillor, I mean, Mr. Sturton. Got a promotion now. Yeah, almost. <laughs> That's no promotion, Mr. Sturton. <laughs> <laughs> That's contract. Since the um, planning and building permit have been, um, have been approved, there are some items that have needed um, addressing, such as um, and it's a slight increase in the building footprint, but the need for fire rated walls um, as per the building code requirements. Um, other items detailed in planning permits, such as the installation of fire cracks that were included in the, in the initial um, design. And also, um, there's been some increased design and construction of connection to services. So, legal point of discharge, power, sewer connection, and also MBN have had to be taken further down for the only of the walls initially anticipated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sturton. Would anyone else like to speak for or against? If I can add to that. Yes, Thank sorry, you, Mr. Sturton. You may continue um, the whole step. This item links back to my notice of motion earlier. It's an example of where ratepayers have picked up the tab for a state government project. Um, there's no arguing that Pickle are deserving, and they do an absolutely incredible job. Um, much needed work across the community, but let's not forget this is a neighbourhood house and that traditionally, to, traditionally falls under the state government jurisdiction. This project, um, sorry, I'm trying to read my words. This project over $2 million has been a state contribution of $100,000 and our ratepayers have put the bill for the over $2 million. Now, that is a huge chunk of a limited budget under huge pressure, and I'd encourage all recipients of ratepayer funds to acknowledge these contributions by displaying the Bass Coast Council logo on any advertising in relation to these projects. Ratepayers rate should be aware that when they see a council logo, that, that it's their money that is delivering the outcomes. And recently, in relation to this particular organisation, uh, there was no sign of acknowledgement of that. So I believe that we will be looking at that into the future. I think it needs to be part of any policy moving forward. And um, I thank the ratepayers for getting behind Pickle, because as I say, they do an incredible job, but just be mindful that they are also a neighbourhood house and neighbourhood house is a state government funded facility. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Holstead. Anyone else like to speak for or against this motion? Councillor Kent. Just a quick one, and I fully support um, the words from Councillor Holstead. I'd just like to remind the community that this is a council asset. It is constructed purposely for uh, the Phillip Island Centre for Adult Learning, Pickle, but it is our ratepayers' asset will always stay our asset, so we're putting money into our own asset. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak? <coughs> Councillor Brooks, would you like to close or put it to a vote? Put it to a vote. 
All those in favour of the recommendation of Reeds, Councillor Sir, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bower, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Lark, Councillor Tassari and Councillor Lang. That recommendation slash motion is carried. And we now move on to item H10, review of instrument of delegation council to Chief Executive Officer. Max introduce. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is to recommend that Council adopts the instrument of delegation to Council's Chief Executive Officer and invoke the previously adopted instrument of delegation from Council's Chief Executive Officer. Council subscribes to a suite of instruments prepared by Maddox Lawyers, which are then adapted and completed to meet the requirements of the charge. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Would a Council like to move the recommendation? Councillor Rooks and seconded Councillor Tassari. Councillor Rooks. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, this is an administrative matter. We've had to update um, the policy um, of the review of instrument to delegation um, because the procurement policy has changed um, and that's been done by our lawyers. So um, I have good faith in this and I'm happy to support the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Tassari. Thank you, Madam Chair. Supportive of uh, the words of Councillor Rook, supportive of our CEO and supportive of Maddox that have uh, put together this uh, document. So uh, happy to support. Thank you, Councillor Tassari. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this recommendation? Councillor Rooks, would you like to close or put a vote? vote? All those in favour? Councillor Lesser, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bower, Councillor Rooks. Councillor Tassari and Councillor Lang, and those against, Councillor Lark. That motion is carried. Now move on to item H12, the lease for the Kilcunda Community Hall 3513-3515 Bass Highway, Kilcunda. Mr Matt. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is to recommend Council Grant a 20-year lease for the Kilcunda Community Hall to the Kilcunna Community Station Incorporated following the completion of the public submission period. Public notice of intention to lease was published on 29 March 2022. No submission to the city. Council may now decide to grant the lease and this is recommended. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Would anyone like to and you know? <laughs> a <little> more general <laughs> chance of uh, anyone like to ask for this? like to make this recommendation as it reads. Councillor Holstead, the second. Oh, Councillor okay. Sir, Councillor Holstead. I think everyone was putting my hand up because this is the result of a notice of motion that I put to Council a little while back. I'm pleased to see it's gone through the process of, uh, you know, advertising and and by the community and that there were no objections to it. Um, the Kilcunda Community Association has put in a significant amount of work on this site. Uh, they've been great custodians of this asset and uh, it, they were really keen to see Council supporting this um, as they have some future plans um, that they would like to continue to act upon. I'd like to pay um, special mention to Andrea Bolsh, who's the president of that association and who um, is a very well articulated and well spoken voice in the Kilcunda community. I think most of the Kilcunda community would know who she is. She contributes significantly um, right across that area. So, congratulations to the work that she's done. And um, I'll be supporting the recommendation. The whole thing, Councillor Sir. Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, as you could see, the ward councillors have uh, worked with this group, and we're all keen to uh, put this one to rest and give the community uh, at Kilcunda some certainty around the use of their hall. It is an, a finally come to a lease agreement uh, with the council and the community uh, partnering together and um, kind of buying into that lease. It's a great little community hall. Hilkunda, um, it's well used, and certainly they're very proud of it. And they've worked tirelessly to fundraise to have, you know, their their inclusions into it. So, as you would know, the Lobster Festival has been run for oh, probably 25 years or something. But that kind of community fundraising went in to build this hall. 
So it's on council land, um, or will through Dell, but um, it's a really a great asset and I'm really pleased that we've been able to finally get this acknowledgement to that hardworking community committee. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Third, Councillor Kemp. Oh. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I better have a word. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the council officers that have done a huge piece of work here. And I'd suggest, uh, in my words, they've probably been banging their head up against the brick wall for quite a long time. It is a hard one, this one. I really respect this community group as I respect all our asset community groups. And this will be more mentioned later on in the afternoon. I, I want it to be said that this group is slightly different to some of our other asset groups. There's some huge money that's been put in there, some huge work and ongoing work by this group, and it had to be treated differently. I fully support the council officers in the way that they work the normal leases, and these leases uh, roughly probably of the four or five years. Uh, so I don't want any outside um, asset groups to read something to this that is not there whatsoever. This group has put in tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So they must be congratulated and a great outcome for them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this recommendation? Councillor Holstead, close or put it to a vote? Put it to go to a vote. Thank you, Madam. All those in favour of the recommendation as it reads, Councillor Lesser, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Lark, Councillor Tansari and Councillor Lang. That motion is carried. And now we're on to item H13, removal of road from public road register, back lane, Walker Street, Dalston. Mr. Mack. Thank you, Madam Chair. The purpose of this report is to seek approval for the road known as back lane, Walker Street, Dalston, to be removed from Council's public road register. It is considered that the road is not reasonably required for this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Can I have a council I move the recommendation as it reads? I'm happy to. Councillor Sirt and Councillor Holstead seconds. Councillor Sirt. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Look, I think this is a procedural matter and uh, makes sense. I mean, you know, really to be able to facilitate this. So I'm happy just to put the recommendation as it stands. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sirt. Councillor Holstead. Nothing further to add. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councillor Sirt. Nothing further. Put it to a vote. Yes, Councillor Sirt. Yep. Uh, sorry, I've got to say it first. To the vote. Anyone else want to speak? <laughs> no, but thanks for offering. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the offer. <laughs> I think about you a lot. You know that yeah. all the time. Keep me up at night. Anyway, nothing further, Ted. Thank you, Councillor Sir. We're going to put it to a vote now. All those in favour, Councillor Sir, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Lark, Councillor Tassari, and Councillor Lang, that motion is carried. And we move on to item H14, proposed road discontinuance, Back Lanes, Fuller Road, Moray, Moray Street, Moray, Moray Street, Wampaggy. And Mr. Mack to introduce. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> This report is to recommend council commence, commence the statutory procedures to discontinue the back lanes Fuller Road, Walker Street, Wampanoag, South Falls Road, and dispose of the land in the roads of the surrounding property owner to form part of their subdivision. The recommendation is consistent with council's road discontinuance and sale policy 2020, as the road is not reasonably required for general public use and has no strategic value for the town. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mack. And I hope Councillor moves the recommendation as it reads. Councillor Bauer and seconded Councillor Tassari. Councillor Bauer. I think this is also a procedural motion and I have nothing to add to it. Let's go ahead. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Councillor Bauer. Councillor Tassari. Oh, I concur with Councillor Bauer's very well constructed words there and um, we'll vote. All right, thanks, Councillor Sasari. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this recommendation? Councillor Lark. I'm just seeking clarification. Uh, there is a nexus between the proposed discontinuance in the subdivision. Um, 
could could I have an outline of the current state of the subdivision and why that nexus was made? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, the surrounding land, I mean, the surrounding land to the roads is owned by one landowner. Effectively, who owns all the parcels, so all eleven or twelve parcels surrounding there. In in addition to this road and selling it to them, it would actually result in a better planning outcome, which is permitted under the current planning controls, and that's the catalyst, I guess, for this recommendation. And, and the remaining one landowner, what, what is the situation with regard to that person? So the effect of this resolution is to go through a public consultation process and okay. their views will be able to be heard. Yeah. And they'll be able to submit um, either for or against that. Yeah, okay. And, and receive adequate comp compensation if need be. Yes, if, if, that's, um, if that's that, one of the outcomes, that could be that's one of the potential outcomes. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mack. And Councillor Lovett, would, like, would anyone else like to speak for or against this? Councillor Bauer, did you want to say anything else or put it to a vote? Put it to a vote. All those in favour? Councillor Sir, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Lark. Councillor Tassari and Councillor Lang, that motion is carried. And now we're going to move on to statutory reports, item I. I'm going to request that a councillor um, move the agenda items I1, I.2, I3, I4 and I5 be considered as a block. Councillor Tassari to second. Councillor Rooks. Um, and would anyone else, would anyone like to discuss any of the reports mentioned? Oh, vote for oh, them. Yep, thanks, Councillor Tassari. You're all so good and helpful, love it. We'll now put that to a vote. Since we're in the block, we them in a block. Yeah. Yeah. in favour. Councillor Lusser, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Schultz, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Laugh, Councillor Tassari and Councillor Lang. That motion is carried. We will now consider those matters in block and if any councillor would like to discuss any items in those reports. Councillor Lusser. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Look, I do. I would like to discuss um, the community asset committees. Now, we've over the years, historically, we've had uh, these committees running um, councils' assets as a voluntary group of um, organisations and working tirelessly, really, doing the day to day operations of halls, most of the halls. Um, the, water, um, the Western Port Ward has the majority of them in it, had a, a large number. Uh, they're all whole merit, so I don't want to just pick out the Western Port Ward ones. But of the people, um, we couldn't, as a council, you talk about blow out in our budget. I mean, if we had to be uh, manning these assets without these volunteers, we'd be sorry about that stuff because these people open the doors, they take the, um, the fees for hire, you know, they facilitate these halls, our facilities to their communities and they do a great job. Uh, we've got there's a whole list on page 189 of all those people that, um, you know, and I don't want to read out all their names individually, but they're, you know, examples of it are Coronet Bay Hall, um, the Pound Creek. Um, there's uh, lots of people that were involved in the Coronet Bay one, Piney Bay, Surf Beach. So the list goes on. So what I'm really trying to emphasise here is that they really value people within our community. Now, um, the council's um, restructured and, and reconducted uh, business with these groups. Some of them have stepped down and um, we're just kind of starting a line in the sand again. So if I can put it like that, but the people who have contributed over the years, I certainly thank them. And I certainly think all the councillors would as well. So thank you. This is Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. So, Councillor Tassari. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was going to be brave and name the um, the Bunurong ones and thank them individually, but uh, at the at the risk of uh, missing someone, I, I am not going to. But I will say to all the uh, the, 
the Bunurong uh, people that have stepped up and helped out on behalf of myself, Councillor Lark and uh, Councillor Lang over there. I'm, I thank you all for that. the tremendous work that you have put in. Um, I appreciate it wholeheartedly, but I, I certainly won't be brave enough to name anyone individually, Councillor Lang, in case I forget someone. Thank you, Councillor Tassari. Would anyone else like to speak to anything in these reports? I will now ask that a councillor um, move a motion that the recommendations attached for the agenda items I1, I2, I3, I4 and I5 be adopted. Councillor Tassari and second, Councillor Rooks. Uh, all those in favour that these recommendations be adopted as read. Um, councillor Lesseur. All those in favour? Councillor Lesseur, Councillor Holstead, Councillor Kent, Councillor Bauer, Councillor Rooks, Councillor Lark, Councillor Tassari and Councillor Lang. That motion is carried. And now we move on to item J. Does any councillor wish to move an item of urgent business? Um, all right, I will now move on to the announcement of the next meeting of council. The next council meeting will be held on 20th of July, 2022 in the Vasco Civic Centre Council Chamber, Value Street East, Wonthaggy at 1 p.m. I'd like to thank everyone who's watched patiently and bared with me through this meeting um, and all those in live stream. And the meeting will now be closed to the public and will end today's live stream. So I'll now declare the meeting closed. Thank you, Madam. We just